the only case he tells me about why he, why he decided to take a, a glass of comic book. Oh, well, I think that, that has to be answered by Shah. Because it was Shah's idea. Well, I really want to punish myself. So. <laughs> and someone else. I had all the people that like, surround me. I had that drug into it. So, um, no, I think it was, I think, you know, I think you kind of, we started doing the comic marts uh, quite a long time ago, and they're really small little things. And then we thought, it just felt like there was a right time in the sort of, the way that comics were changing and the way that Glasgow was growing um, and the way the indie scene uh, kept adding and adding. And then when we started making our own comics for Black Art Press, that then seemed like the right time for us to actually do a Comic Con, um, because there was a big enough grand swell of independent creators, and it was really be purely because of the independent creators that we made a Comic Con. Just to, you know, all these different people making all these different books um, on a stage that they could then use that platform and it's kind of gone from strength to strength. You know, a year ago, um, they were all disparate using different types of, of printers. And then within that, within that year, you know, the vast majority of people that are creating indie comics here now are all using the same printer that we use off the back of what we did that time. They've all, like everyone's raised their game and it's kind of all helped one another. Yes. Okay. And also, Glasgow needs it. And it's, you know, it's, it's become, you know, a good thing. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. So do you think that what's what's different about a Glasgow Comic Con than compared to like Cow or, or Bristol or what, what's I, unique about it? Well I think that I think the thing is is that this is and this is where, you know, we had the idea of doing it and then the influence. Uh, yeah, I think it's more a spirit a spirit of collaboration, you know, yeah. when when you work in and you know so many people and you want to yeah. do we look, at, we look at it very, quite differently. We look at it from the point of view, for instance, this, this weekend was supposed to be last weekend, but we decided not to set it then because we knew that people hadn't been paid. So we're automatically thinking of the dealers. We're obviously automatically thinking of the small press people, how they can maximise their product and have a more successful day. Whereas if we'd had it last weekend, it probably wouldn't have been successful. Yeah. So this is a, in ways we think about the event yeah. that maybe other people don't. Yeah, because we're invested as creators anyway. But also, I think we're quite old school in the sense oh, yeah. that we believe Very much so. we believe in sort of, you know, collaboration, believe in working with other people. Yep. And um and we didn't want to we don't want the Comic Con to be, you know, everyone everyone's biggest complaint about Comic Con here is the venue in terms of the way that it works and yeah. the tightness and all this kind of stuff. But actually what we're doing is we're using a venue that really needs the money. Um that utilizes it, gives it, is in a, in a, a you know, an area which it is in need of regeneration. And it's also for one of the most famous and well thought of artists yeah. to come out and of Scotland. That's sort of link, and it's not an airport. So anymore. it makes complete sense, doesn't it? Yeah. It's the ultimate of what we're trying to do. Yeah. We feed from art, we give to art, and we yeah. make art. Yeah. Cool. And we celebrate it. Yeah. So what's, uh, are you already thinking about next year, or is that? Yes, we're already thinking about next yeah. year, yeah. So is there any, any John's already already got guests lined up. Actually, yeah, I've got some great guests from the states and from England. Can you give uh, Can you give any spoilers, John? Uh, I can only say one thing. Uh, one of the artists is famous for doing Wonder Woman covers, recent Wonder Woman covers. I can't really say any more than that. I think I would narrow it down to two. Uh, and who else can I say? Well, we've had we've had chats with a, a well-known. A fantastically well-known artist who's one of the, the two pivotal artists in the 1980s with one of the projects they worked on mm. who are interested in coming who want to come and there's more kind of old school 70s 80s creators from the states who are interested and I think what it is for us is I think if we provide an event that our guests enjoy as well as as the yeah. actual fans yeah then they're more likely to see to other guests yeah. well we were treated really nicely they did everything they could for us, they were very hands-on, and that would make other guests more inclined to come. And also, the, mo the most important aspect is that every single guest said to me today, the crowd were amazing. Yeah. They were so enthusiastic, they were so warm, they were lovely. And, I'm, you know, I'm very proud of, I'm really the, proud of, that. of the fans of the that, fans, that yeah. come to... Well, I'm not even Glasgow fans, they're, they're from all over. Yeah, Just yeah, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. From Manchester, exactly. Further afield, Aberdeen, yeah, and um, 
but everyone just seems to get into the spirit yeah. of the event yeah, but and enjoy I, I, what I, we're I, doing. I kind of think, I, and that's why I'm sort of resistant to sort of you know move the venue straight away because I think part of why it's successful is because of that venue. And mm-hmm. when you look outside and those pews, it makes people want to sort of. It's interesting because the complaint we get is this has been absolutely brilliant. When are you going to a bigger venue? And it's like, well, if it's absolutely brilliant, why would we go to another venue? Mm. If it's actually in tune with what it's we're well, doing yeah, in terms of feeling. in terms of collaboration yeah. with art, with artists, why would we go to another venue? Because not only do you know that you're going to get a good event, you know that the money you spent, part of that is going to a really worthwhile cause. Yeah. So tell us about the sector, then, guys. What, what's, the, what's the idea behind that? I'll take the first part of that show. I think initially we had wanted to create an award which celebrates the output. And especially, I think, for, for both of us, since the output, and I'm talking about the output of comics creators in Glasgow and outlying areas, has increased in quality so much in such a short space of time that we both felt that it needed to be celebrated. Not that it should be, it needed to be, because there's just too much great stuff out there. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it, really. And I think kind of the only sort of thing to add to that, I guess, on top of on top of that is be, because of all those people, it's just nice for them to sort of be recognised in some way, and um, for them to be an organisation, or type of organisation within Scotland or Glasgow. And not that we want, that we don't want to run that organisation. We want to set it up that we've you know we planted a seed of what it is yeah and then let it sort of develop and grow it's growing beyond being an emir award it's become yeah. we want it to be to actually have a sense of place within the yeah. hearts and minds of comic creators yeah as for instance for this year we gave a bursary for independent and small press tables which is connected to SICPA, so they could get a reduction of 25 percent off their tables and that's a way of helping them still mm. come to the event, still make money, still produce, without feeling like it's a risk Yeah. so, so much. So tell know. us a bit though, some of the winners then, if this is on Talk, talk Comics. Yeah. Winners? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I can remember. Well, that was, uh, <laughs> the winner for Best Comic was uh, No More Heroes by Gordon McLean. Yep. And uh, I think for us, we were very happy that Gordon had won because, you know, it's a very high quality looking comic it's, it's not something that would look off at a place on mm. the shelves with DC and Marvel you know yeah. and for a first attempt it's obviously of a very yeah. very high standard yeah. so there was I mean it was incredibly close the mm. standard almost made that Maximum Allen the brand new comic that we're producing mm. um, by Russ Leonard and Brian Rankin I thought should have won but I'm biased because I read it in Capone and thought it was amazing um, also, Star Trudge by Rob Miller was up yeah. there, and it was it was there was literally one vote between all these comics. Yeah. And then for best artist, it went to James Devlin for School of the Damned, and he also won best cover for School of the Damned number one. Mm-hmm. And what were the other two awards? Yeah, John Lee's won best writer for the Standard again, and I was really pleased and really tough for him because I you know, the first time I'd seen the Standard, I thought it, it is just John is a lovely guy. Amazing. Um, he's a, he, but there's something about him where you look at him and the way that he's written that book, you think he, he, it feels like mature. That's his first comic. He's really mature. Mature before like, his age. Yeah, yeah, it feels like that's his sixth, seventh, eighth different title. And it's the, yeah. it's the thing Alan Moore goes on about with comic characters. It's the emotional resonance. Yeah. That he's got down, and for such a young voice, that's yeah. quite incredible. Really, yeah. I think. Yeah. Really, really well, well deserved. And we have a new award next year because we put this on the, the list. We had a vote for what new award do you want to see added to the mm-hmm. Sigmas? And it was best letter, best colour, best character, best digicomic. And people resoundingly voted for best new character. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and the great thing is, it's by the people for the people. Right? Yes, so yes, so the people. The, no, it's but, not it, but it is. And, uh, and I think that's. It's that people power in its purest form. And also, the other thing it does is it adds value to everyone else's books. So for all those people that were w- within that process, you know, one of the reasons all indie creators sold so many books. So many Cole books sold out, yeah. Reality War sold out, Andrew Doherty who did Fat Man and Ribbon, his yeah. first print of a comic ever, yeah. he sold a, over a hundred of his. Yeah. 
This is these are unheard of figures. Yeah. Max Mallon sold what I think seventy five percent of its run. You know, these are just unheard of. It's yeah. fantastic. And there's one other word we should mention. It was the uh, outstanding achievement to comics, and that went to Dave Alexander of McBam Brothers fame, Electric Soup. Yes. He also was up for uh, School of the Dam, and he was yeah. very close on that for best yeah. artist. Viz. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. A real legend. He's been working in the industry for 30 years and we really felt that it was time that someone recognised his achievement yeah. and the fact that he's such a lovely guy so and he's so amiable, yeah. very yeah. giving and a legend in my eyes yeah, and absolutely. I'm sure yours too. Yeah, big time, yeah. Don't know anyone that doesn't like him. No. Fantastic.